What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Dead Noise. I'm Chris, and I am here with the one and only Waylon Rivas from A Killer's Confession. Thank you. I gotta correct you real quick. Um, our now our name. My wife is here. Is, is Revis. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that's fine. <laughs> Nobody has been able to pronounce my name since <laughs> Beavis and Butthead. Everybody through the '80s and everything was Revis, 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 Revis. And then Beavis and Butthead came out, and my name magically turned to Rebus. Oh my God! And dude, and nobody ever. I and, and I do this to everybody, so don't don't take offense. Mm -hmm. But I have to correct you. It's like my name's Revis. I'm not Beavis. <laughs> because uh, you know, I I think it's funny because really, you know, that show came out, and overnight my name became Rebus. <laughs> so I'm like, my name's not Rebus. It's Revis. <laughs> you know. So, but it, it's it's just. Uh, Beavis is an icon. Okay, <laughs> what the fuck am I got to say about it? <laughs> Does it ever get old having to constantly remind? Uh, no, it's kind of people? funny now. It, it, like back in the day, I used to get angry. It's like, man, can't you pronounce my name? But uh, like <laughs> it, it, over time, it's it's become comical because I realize that it's never going to change. And you know, it's like even my wife when she met me thought my name was Rebus. <laughs> and uh, uh, like I was like, hey, look, see, look, see. Like, uh, she thought my name was Revis. I'm like, no, it's, it's Revis. And uh, my brother and myself, we will be the first ones to correct you as soon as you get that name wrong, aren't we, honey? <laughs> and I've watched her do it. She's like, my name is Revis. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, let's see if my research failed me with this one. If I'm not mistaken, you're from Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Yes, I am. Uh, JP, over here, my bass player, and I are for, are, are really from Wilkesboro. JP, uh, we're from Wilkes County. I'm from Wilkesboro. JP is more from the Mulberry, Fair Plains area. North Wilkesboro, Mulberry, Fair Plains. Uh, yeah, you you were right before, like, you were in North Wilkesboro. Like, you were right around the border of Fair Plains. So, yes. And you're kind of a regular here in Jacksonville. You're like an honorary citizen in a way. Yeah, uh, like back in the day with Mushroom Head, I would come in and it would be like one of the only places we would play. We did it was Planet Rock mm -hmm. uh, uh, down the street and we did that in Jester's, which was in uh, Fayetteville. And that was that was a long, long time ago. Mm. And uh, it just kind of became an honorary place of like a, like a home away from home. So when you see hooligans on the tour itinerary, whenever that list comes out, how how does it feel for you? And always, like always, to be back tonight, what's it like for you? It always feels good to come back to hooligans, you know. Um, like I the, right here at the at Bombs Away, I've got I've got like four tattoos on my arms, like from Bombs Away from oh, back wow. in the day, and uh, my Kratos that's actually right here was done here, the early Kyler, um, you know. And uh, I know that the people that did them then are no longer here, but like still it has, it has memory and, and always coming out here. And uh, first thing we do is get some Bojangles. I didn't, <laughs> I did not make it to Smithfield's today. I'm kind of a little bit disappointed in myself. I, I thought about the pulled pork. I did. I, 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 was like, I may be full from chicken, but I definitely could, um, I could definitely use some pork. <laughs> Smithfields is a must, oh, especially Smith when it's right down the street too. Oh, man, the hush puppies <laughs> and pulled pork is, is good stuff, <laughs> and the and the vinegar based is, oh, like, God. like I'll go across the country and we'll always see Carolina barbecue, <laughs> and uh, my wife and JP can both attest to this. I will walk up and be like, I will, I'll test to that. <laughs> like, what you got? <laughs> and I've also heard that on this specific tour. You are playing some Mushroom Head songs. Yes, and uh, I'm just doing it one last time. Um, you know, I, I got contracted to go to Australia, and they wanted me just to do a complete Mushroom Head set. And, I, and at first, I was no. I didn't want. I didn't want to do it. I like Julie taught me into it. She's like, "It's a free trip to Australia. Go just sing whatever." <laughs> you know, and uh, I didn't want to do it, and I did it. And, and, you know, it's like I have spent so many years not playing those songs where it's like I focused on A Killer's Confession. And A Killer's Confession, first of all, is first and foremost. Like, those are the songs I want to play. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play the other stuff because it's like, I, like you cannot move forward by looking back. But with that being said, I got home, and I was not planning on doing it ever again. 
And uh, Julie's like, Waylon, you got to do something. She goes, my phone has not shut up in three days. And it was like a thousand messages. Like, you have to do this in the States. You have to do this in the States. You have to do this in the States. And it's not a money thing. It's not a, it's not a, like, I'm not trying to book it as, like, I'm trying to be the second coming or whatever. This is like, all right, I got 13 days. If you do not show up in those 13 days, you miss the window. You're never seeing me do this again because, like I said, you cannot move forward if you're looking back. And to hold on to the past, you can't make progress for the future. And this is that last thing, and this is a gift to the fans. And this is because y'all made me who I am, and I love you so much that I'll give you what you want, but stay the hell out of my DMs from here on out. <laughs> Um, to that point, how did that Australia tour feel? Number one, playing the Mushroom Head songs again, but also touring with Anders, the original singer for Slipknot. Slipknot and Mushroom Head were two big names in the scene, so to kind of revisit those chapters, what was it like for you? I felt no different. Uh, I, I was never part of the beef. Uh, Anders did his thing, and uh, respect to all that, but the, the Mushroom Head Slipknot shit, I don't give a care. I, I never did. I was always a fan of both. Um, that I was never part of the beef, you know, like it, it wasn't a thing. It, it was, it was a long tour, um, down there. It was very rushed. I don't feel like I got much rest on that run, but that's how it was. It was the way it was booked. I mean, it was flights every day. So like you'd get there, you'd sound check. I would run merch. I'd go on stage. I'd go back to the hotel. I'd shower and I'd get back on a plane. And at the same time, I had RSV. Mm. So, like, I was fighting the, the sickness the whole time. And, and then my wife, God bless her, she suffered with me. She stayed on the phone with me all day, all night, just so I wasn't by myself. And it was very, it, 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 was, it was a good time, but it was a very, it was a lot of hard work. Like, it wasn't like I got to sit back and relax and enjoy it. Um, and I, and, and everybody there, don't take that wrong. What I just said, it was just a lot of work and a lot of stress and I was under the weather. I enjoyed playing for you guys, but like the, to do it was really just hard on my body and I'm still getting over it now because I pretty much came right home and hopped right back on tour. So it didn't really stop. Like I, I, it, I've, I, I'm kind of like still like 90%. I'm not at a hundred yet. So has sobriety affected the way that you make music nowadays? Like, has it impacted your songwriting process at all? It's focused me. Um, I don't, like, focus on trying to get done so I can party. Um, it's, it, it's more focus, more clarity, um, more storytelling, more uh, just opened up uh, my mind to what I've done and how can I convey that into a song of, like, some reality. I'm not trying to be a hook master. I'm not trying to give you a fad. I'm not trying to give you anything. I'm trying to give you a dose of reality. And uh, it's definitely uh, changed a lot of the way I write. Earlier this year, you released the single Tongue. Yes. Um, it's a part of your upcoming album, Victim One. Is yes. there any update on a release date or anything like that for Beginning that album? Beginning of 2024. That's all I'm allowed to say right now. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm allowed. Uh, we're looking at uh, early 2024. Trust me, these guys are ready to start playing that stuff just as much as I am and just moving forward. Um, but like things change, we have a different plan. Um, you know, the, we're we're just doing our thing. And uh, 2024 is going to be because we can't. We, we're too late in the year now to release it. And uh, you know, you, can't, you don't want to release in fourth quarter around Christmas. It's just no. it's not good. So. <clears throat> 2024, you'll get victim one and uh, starting uh, uh, writing on the next album ASAP. Really? Yes. Wow. Uh, <laughs> why wait? That's fair. <laughs> why wait? Julie would be like, aren't you bored? Go write a song. <laughs> Tired of seeing you up here watching SpongeBob. <laughs> Go. <laughs> no, just, Julie honestly is a breath of fresh air. She is uh, so wrapped in with the guys. Like, like It's like a killer's confession is me and the guys and Julie. Mm. Like that, it, it, it is, it's like we tour everywhere. Like like they know, don't ask me, ask mama. <laughs> you know, Julie keeps us in line. But she, when I get home, she'll be like, 
think I want to hear a new song. <laughs> Go write it. Uh, <laughs> you hear the giggle? She, she knows I'm right too. She goes, I want to hear something new. <laughs> and, and she does. But it also, like, she keeps me focused. She doesn't le- let me lose track of when, you know, like when this is getting stale. It's time to get something new. And it's like, like, and she'll be the first one to be like, that sucks. You, you Did you really just say that? Like, and, and we will fight. I'll be like, you get out of my studio. <laughs> well, you don't get no dinner. Get out of my studio. And then I change it. So that's, see, I told you. And I'm like, shut up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's loving because, like, she will I come to. Oh, yeah, tongue. Oh. She didn't like tongue. You didn't like tongue at first. But it always works out. It does. Like, and then I go down and change it. She goes, I told you. I'm like, <laughs> damn it. I can't win in my own house. And it's okay because, like, you got to have people in your life, and this goes with anything. you got to have people that will tell you no because if you surround your sound with yes people, you will settle for mediocrity. And uh, we got over here, we got our new guitarist. This is James, Mr. Greenhead over here. Hi, James. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Hi, buddy. James, I have a secret about James. James knows no strangers. He will talk to all of you. He, go say, hey, James. Tell about your popcorn. Hi. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, <laughs> hold on, Mama. <laughs> Julie, stay here. <laughs> no, stay here. I can't. Why can't you? Bye. Bye. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was like we, you know, Julie, like, is such a blessing to have a team. And uh, the key word is team. We, uh, we totally just do uh, everything together, like, and and I like it this way. There's not too many hands involved, and uh, you know, and we have an outside source, and that's that's what matters. We have arrived to my favorite part of every interview, and I have a speed round for you. Mm-hmm. I got five questions, and you can elaborate. You can keep it rapid fire. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> favorite song to play live. Favorite song to play live. Thank you. Good night. Favorite city to play in. Hmm. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't know. JP. I think uh, we're going to say, we're gonna, let's, let's say it's a favorite city and just say favorite venue. Favorite venue. Hooligans. No. <laughs> um, that would be, I, and I've not done with AKC, would be the Rave in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, that's a good one. That's a great venue. I've never been there, but I've we're seen. We're all wearing the same hoodie. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the machine shop, too. I said we're all wearing the machine it. shop in Flint, Michigan. Like I like the raid because it's haunted, yeah. because it's creepy. But when, like, if you, if, yeah, that's a great point. When it comes to play in a venue, the machine shop is no I've better. There's never, no I've better. Never been in a place where you just immediately are family. Yeah, no. And there's there's working is all family. Oh wow. Yeah, and they've had the same crew for over twenty years. Kevin knows. Like, 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 seriously, we all have our machine shop stuff on right now. Um, Kevin knows just how how it's done. If you're a if you're an up and coming club, go take notes from the uh, from uh, Flint's machine shop. That is the club to base your club off of. He has it down, and just just like there's no better. There's no better. You're right. There is no better. That place is iconic. Yes, I've never even been on that side of the country, but like that's a bucket list place for me. Like I got to see a show there. I don't care what show. I got to see somebody there. Oh yeah, that's it's very much uh, the the machine shop is, yeah, just it, they were the first to like put their stamp of approval on me too. So like I love you guys, Flint, Michigan. Who's the one artist or band? Maynard. <laughs> don't even have to finish that one. Okay. <laughs> Um, your most embarrassing moment on stage. God. Mm, I too many drugs to remember. Oh, damn. I'm, I'm not even going to throw myself down that pit. No. Uh, because they were pre-AKC, pre Bushroom Ed. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, they were. They, he's smiling. He knows. <laughs> he's been around since we'll day leave one. That sh- that, we'll leave that stuff dead and buried. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of when we got thrown off stage at fucking Ground Zero, it was pretty bad. But that wasn't even our fault. That wasn't our fault, but we were, yeah. That was pretty embarrassing, though. 
had happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were in mid set and we were kicked out of the venue, told not to return ever, ever, ever because of our uh, drum tech. Our drum tech, bro. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> well. well we're, we're, yeah, we've been talking. I would hope so. <laughs> Hasn't we're good. Time well, we were drunk too. I think I was laying on the stage at that time too. I was pretty, I was pretty hammered that day. Dude, you have no idea. <laughs> I knew, I knew you would, you would never have survived three quarters of that. I know a friend who like used to play shows in his bare feet, and I'm like, why are you walking on that stage? And your bed is just gross. There, it was a rare occasion that three quarters dead got on stage sober. And I mean, when we say we were drunk, we would slosh drunk mm. and did not care. But, but those were different days too, man. It's like we 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 were trying to be Motley Crew, and we didn't know how to be Motley Crew. Mm. We were kids. We were kids. It was a whole other time. It was. And the last question, always my favorite one to ask: the song you wrote that means the most to you. Fuck. Jesus, you really you really make me think tonight song that means the most to me um my song when i'm not around uh that i did was for my dad and uh yeah um i think when i'm not around means the most to me mm -hmm. uh because like it was a song about my father uh, and uh just absolutely just like it's just i was just relaying a message that he had laid to me before he passed away so that one well, just like that, that was everything I had for you. Um, was there any closing message to any of Killer's Confession fans watching? We love you. Uh, we all love you to very, very much. You know, we've been patiently waiting. You've stuck by us. More is coming. Um, JP's never going anywhere. Um, he, 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 he said that he will, he's going to wheel me out one day on a wheelchair and then kick me off the stage. And that's I mean, we already said we're, we're not retiring unless we retire together. Yeah, nice. We're not. So. We'll, when we're, 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 we got more in store, and uh, we're just getting started, guys. Thank you for the support, as always. Well, thank you so much for the time. Thank you. It's been great talking My with you. My pleasure, brother. My pleasure. And until the next interview, stay tuned, stay scared, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>